Be the Talk, episode 320, featuring Tom Edwards. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Tom Edwards. Tom, are you ready to talk? I'm ready. <laughs> Tom Edwards is the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer at Epsilon Agency and an Ad Age Marketing Technology Trailblazer. Tom Edwards, welcome to the talk. Nathan, thank you for having me. Your talk is called The Evolution of Experience. I love the talk because you make a, a real uh, connection between uh, today's world of artificial intelligence as well as uh, you're a Star Wars fan as well. The tablets that we use, th C-3PO, you bring it all together. Um, take us behind the talk. Absolutely. I wanted to create a connection with the audience through something they use every day. That's their mobile device. And use that as a baseline to get everybody kind of settled, use some pop culture references, entertainment references such as Star Wars, but really give a sneak peek into the near future on how, you know, artificial intelligence and how our environment is adjusting and ultimately how consumer behavior drives emerging technology and emerging technologies impact on behavior. Yeah, well, and, and here's here's the funny thing, like um I uh, talk universe knows, you know, that I'm from a healthcare family. So my father posts some pictures from the hospital and it was like this robot going around, I guess, dispensing meds. And it was just yeah. this giant m m robot tray <laughs> going around. And I just never seen that before when I was a kid and he would, you know, take me into the little vending machine room on rounds in the late seventies. I you know we didn't have that. We had C three PO in there, but that was my comment back to my dad. I'm like, did you see R two D two around the, the bend or giving out meds or prescribing or diagnosing? So these things are all a part of our modern world and they used to be science fiction, but they're there here now. How are you working with these technologies and 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 tying them together and 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 really bringing them into the real world? Uh, Tom. Yeah, I've spent the last 20 years really looking at both consumer behavior, like how people interact with technology and helping organizations integrate emerging technology into their businesses. And what I do is I look at it through the lens of three different filters. It's empower, exponential and enhanced. So when you talk about integrating all these emerging technologies, empower is understanding you know, now it's our desire to control our experiences. We control everything from our, the way in which we watch television. You know, I have three Gen Z children and they control all of their experiences. Mm -hmm. The second is really around exponential. And that's the role that intelligent systems are going to play to further enhance our lives. The research that the research that I conducted really shows that in order for people to adopt intelligent systems in order for this to happen, it's all about ease and convenience. And the third piece is really around, you know, our reality is shifting. So this whole idea of augmented, virtual, hyper, mixed, you take all of these kind of factors, what people don't realize, they think about them as separate technologies, but everything's actually converging. You get virtual assistants converging with the camera. So you've got a new lens to your world and a better way to understand everything that's happening around you. So it's a, it's a really interesting time. Give me those three E's again. It was exponential, um, Something yeah, in the past tense. Give me, give me those three again. Yeah. It's empower, exponential, and enhanced. Enhanced. So if you, yeah. look at, you can look at all of technology that's that's out there right now and how it's impacting individuals and behaviors, because within a very short amount of time, our environment is going to adapt to us versus us inputting into the technology. That's what's happening. And that's powerful stuff because uh, just like you said, I mean, I, I have the extended Hulu subscription and so i don't watch anything live anymore or i do if i just catch it and then we go to commercial i'm going to go to the dvr or i'm going to go to the on demand and, and it's just a customization and it's it's part of my expectation as a entitled <laughs> privileged consumer in the modern world but i mean the, these things uh uh beyond recreation they're actually helping uh I, i'm reading that surgeon uh, robot surgeons are doing a better job at certain techniques than physical human surgeons. And then you can combine the two through augmented reality and, you know, and, and, and 
cut out all the bugs and eventually come out with ways to enhance what we're all doing. Even our glasses are probably the the uh, original uh, augmented reality or, or, or artificial technology, I guess, back with uh, Ben Franklin or, or other people with the bifocal. So um, do you give us any other examples of, of what's coming forth into uh, the world that we live in? Yeah, you know, even going back to your earlier healthcare example, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm finding is that if you humanize robots or humanize robotics, it actually drives more even patient adherence towards medication than going to a website or, you know, using a mobile device or whatever it is, just because it's that ability to kind of interact with the technology. That's just one piece. And then you have all of the major technology uh, manufacturers, you know, I follow the patents. That's one way to kind of get a little bit of a tease on what's potentially coming. And you combine that with Gen Z and millennials openness to actually taking in and using a glasses form factor to kind of change their world. That's another kind of key thing to consider. And also the role of the camera. We consider the camera as like a capture device, but for a number of Gen Z, it's, it's actually a communication device. My daughter will not actually call anyone, but she'll spend almost all day FaceTiming with her friends. So it's, uh, it's changing expectations tied to experiences the role that augmented reality is going to play. So it's a, it's a fascinating time. Well, I love your example of, you know, what's, what's easier if you have all these complicated medications and complicated schedules, and then they, they cause maybe a little bit of nausea. So you're not feeling right, but it's the best thing for you. What's easier going to a website and figuring (laughs) everything else and try and trying to retrieve it or having maybe a bot or, you know, email sequence or something more advanced, than that, mm-hmm. more secure than that, that, that people would use, but have something kind of hold you by the hand and kind of guide you through and kind of idiot proof um, the the whole sequence so that you take the things that you're supposed to be taking. Uh, I love that example. Um, you know, what, what specifically, uh, Tom, I mean, I know you're looking at trends. I know you're kind of seeing all the patents out there. You're kind of forecasting the future. What are some of the things that, that you're actually doing in terms of maybe consulting or problem solving for, for individuals or corporations? Or tell me a little bit about what you're actually doing in the real world, uh, uh transactionally in that way. Absolutely. So, you know, I run a pretty big team and our innovation team is really focused on integrating new and emerging technologies, Mm -hmm. whether it's creating new augmented reality experiences, whether it's using, you know, various forms of chatbots or getting into the voice assistant ecosystems of Alexa and Google Assistant. We're using these technologies to help brands and organizations drive kind of their business results here. So we're testing and learning. We're looking at, you know, consumer behavior, and we're also helping them understand that experiences are moving beyond mobile and desktop into voice, vision, and touch. And how you design these experiences and understand that AI-based robots are gonna become proxies. So virtual assistants are gonna take on more responsibility from us as they're able to predict more of our needs. And people are open to it. It goes back to that ease and convenience idea. So if they're able to take and do that, it, it just it fundamentally, brands have, and organizations have to understand the role that it's not just about the consumer, but it's also going to be about their virtual proxy here in the near future. And how do you navigate that? So that's another area that myself and my team are working on to help uh, major corporations understand that. Well, so that's, that's a, I had to think, uh, I had to fry a couple of brain cells on that. So really instead of devices and instead of the keyboard in front of me on my laptop, uh, right here, voice, vision, and touch. So this sure. is actually a really wonderful thing because we can, I, I mean, this is almost like a Star Trek universe where computer, <laughs> when exactly. Scotty would say, computer, do this for me, and the computer would actually intelligently do it. We're actually there now with, or, or, or getting there with uh, Alexa and some of these other things. Um, does that, obviously, I guess that does excite you because this is your field and you love it. What do you say for the people that, that are not quite excited and they're going to, for every Star Wars, Star Trek reference, they're going to bring in the Kubrick, uh, Hal, uh, what, what was that, uh, 2001, yeah. the Space Odyssey. Yeah, no, what do you say Odyssey. to the Debbie Downers out there? Batteries in the Matrix, et cetera. <laughs> I mean, the reality is there are three types of AI. You've got artificial narrow intelligence, which is like Alexa. Artificial general intelligence is supposed to come al- online sometime in the mid-2020s. And that's basically, you know, the entire computing power of all of human brains combined. And then what people are mainly scared of is the super intelligence or hive mind approach. The reality is these systems are going to augment our intelligence. They're not going to replace our intelligence. 
So if, if, you know, we can remove some of the entertainment references, they're fun to talk about. It's fun to watch, but the reality is the majority of these systems are going to further enhance our own abilities as human beings. That's, that kind of takes away a little bit of that. Um, but that there still needs to be kind of the, the ethical responsibility tied to some of these systems, et cetera. So there's that whole piece of it. But, uh, my personal belief is it's about intelligence augmentation versus world domination. <laughs> well, we've been enjoying this conversation with Tom Edwards. His talk is called The Evolution of Experience. And I, I just love it when uh, when Tom and other guests start dropping futuristic references into the 2020s, which is really only uh, actually only one. It's one year away. <laughs> it's, it's one year away. I'm still living in the in the 20th century. Um, that's only one year away. So thank you, Tom, for, <laughs> you know, at, at his own expense, it's only one year away, folks. I'm, I'm thinking it's yeah. like eons away. It's only one <laughs> one year away. Anyway, the evolution of experience. We're going to be back with Tom. We're going to pivot over to you, Talk Universe, in the Blitz round. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be The Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast. At the end, I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. And it's time for the Blitz Round with Tom Edwards. I'm going to ask Tom a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of his recent talk. Tom, are you ready? I'm ready. Were you invited to speak, or did you apply? For this event, I applied. How did you get accepted? What advice do you have for people? I spent a lot of time on the actual video. So taking the time to understand, you know, what would resonate, um, getting that this is normally a 45 minute talk and distilling it down to a 15 minute talk, being able to hit kind of the core high points and getting that level of excitement. You know, I'm very passionate about emerging technology and robots and all those things. So just making sure your passion comes through in the submission is a really key point of, uh, of differentiation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tom, are you a, a memorizer? Are you an improviser or are you a blender? I'm definitely a blender. So I put a lot of rigor into the memorization of it. You know, one of my core recommendations to everybody is to always write out your full talk track and then use power statements as you're going through. But I love interacting and, and feeding off of the crowd as well. Tell so you have your core. Go ahead. No, tell me more about the power statement. I like that. Yeah. So within each section, when you write out your talk track, I take each, if there are three or four paragraphs tied to a slide, I pull out the main point from each of those mm. paragraphs and put them at the front of each of those paragraphs. So there would be four power statements. Mm. And it just helps you really understand going from slide to talk track, making sure that you hit your core kind of themes and points that you want to get across. So you don't kind of lose that momentum. Man, that's powerful. So I, I love that. Uh, do you bold the power statement? Do you uh, link it to a place in the house as you walk around the house? I mean, I've heard a lot <laughs> of different techniques to be able to to uh, anchor uh, some of the power statements and, and actually the entire talk. I have a little robot that follows me around the house and kind of repeats. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, no, it's it. just really <laughs> It's really about, you know, I write it out then. What I do is I take um, I take a notebook and then just write out the whole, you know, the slide and then just the power statements as kind of triggers. So mm -hmm. once those are memorized, that's that's kind of a process. It just helps kind of take and collect your thoughts and make sure that you can kind of compartmentalize each of those segments, but you're still delivering the overall message. And it's incredibly helpful. See, Talk to Universe, Tom has the answer here. You're thinking, how how do I memorize an 18 minute speech and and do all? I mean, every every time I bring somebody on, and it does. By the way, it doesn't need to be an 18 minute speech. The smaller, the better, actually. Yeah. But how do I memorize a nine minute, a, a 10 minute speech, or, or whatever it is? Tom just gave you the answer. What's easier, an 18 minute speech or a series of power statements that you yeah. know? leads one to another powerful powerful stuff love it tom were you an opener were you a closer or were you in between i was kind of in the middle so my job was to bring the future in you know there is a lot around emotion and vulnerability then there's around education my job was really to help bring everybody in and think about the future and so they put me right kind of in the middle to help mm. uh, bridge that what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk, Tom? 
<laughs> I have a lot of embedded videos with no sound in there to kind of help convey it. Sometimes it helps people to see kind of the future state. Mm -hmm. During the middle of the talk, one of the videos, the sound wasn't muted. And so all of a sudden you hear this blaring sound coming through and that was immediately cut off. But, you know, you just have to roll with it and you can integrate it in, make a joke about it, you know, acknowledge it and just keep going. Well, it sounds like the sound guy was really on it. <laughs> Definitely. He was so fascinated with the robots that, you know, the, the muted sound didn't happen, but it's fine. <laughs> well, we've been enjoying this talk with Tom Edwards. His talk is called The Evolution of Experience, and we're going to have a link to that talk in our show notes at bethetalk.com. You can also connect with Tom at his website, Blackfin. 360.com blackfin and then the numbers 360.com and we'll be back with tom edwards in just a moment for the final word of advice hey talk universe i hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you want to give the talk to change the world but you don't know how or even where to start no problem at all go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five-day email course that will show you how. Absolutely free. Just go to bethetalk.com forward slash get accepted. And we're back with Tom Edwards. What's the final word of advice? The final word of advice, again, is to write out your talk, use the power statements. One thing I didn't mention is actually record your talk. Listen to yourself. Sometimes the written word translating to the spoken word, it's, it's, it can be a little clunky. So you have to refine it just a little bit. So what I would do is I would use a screen share, you know, like Camtasia as a tool, record the talk with the slides, listen to it over and over and figure out ways to refine it. Because at that point, that also helps kind of memorize the talk and helps you just really get it incredibly tight and ask for feedback. Share it with friends and family. It's really important that you get actual reactions. Does that kind of iterative process really help to refine it and make it more relatable to the audience? Well, Tom Edwards, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to come on the talk today and share your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Just really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.